What's up, buddy? Good you reached out to me. At least it won't be a waste of a stream because I was doing it for somebody else. So non-Trinitarian, you mean anti or not? Uh, anti. So that means, yes. Okay, that's good. Hopefully you'll repent. What's going on? Yeah, um, I heard, I saw it. There's, a, there's people who are non-Avidus and you yes. said they were Aryan. Yeah, that means you believe like Arius. They're not Jesus. Arian. Do you know what Arian is? Let me see. Arians <laughs> believe that Jesus was created out of nothing. Okay. Right? And they and believe so and, but, uh, Adventist non Trinitarian believe that Jesus was Jesus okay. was uh, Jesus born from the Father. Exist? Did Jesus always exist or did he come into being? Or did he always yes, exist? Jesus. I know you don't want to call you you're an Arian because Arius thought he came into being. That's what I mean by created. No, but it's theory between begotten and it. Get to the so did Jesus always exist? No, he didn't. And he came into being. Yes. Now to show you how irrational are you, you said he came out of God? Yes. If he's in God, is there anything in God that has a beginning? No. So now watch how you just spoke with both sides of your mouth. So Jesus came into being, but he was within God and came out of God. Whereas within God, that means that he has no beginning because nothing in God has a cause or a beginning. So make up your mind. He was unconscious. Okay, so you're saying. He resided in God, but he wasn't conscious, but still he's in God. Now, when he came out of God, did he separate from God? Yes. So how did he separate from God? Because he was born from God and now he's his, okay, now he's his severed he being. Out, that connection was severed. So he's in God and comes out of God. So now he's severed from God. How did that happen? He's born. Okay, let's try it again. If he's in God and he came out of God, how did he stop being connected to God? That's what only begotten means. Can you show me in scripture where, because Jesus is begotten, that implies that prior to, quote unquote, his begetting, he didn't exist consciously? Because that's what I want you to prove. John 1.1, 1, 1, parse for me the first sentence of John 1.1. 1, 1. Parse it for me, the Greek. Break it down for me. Parse it for me when it says, in the beginning was the word. What does that verb was in the Greek? That Jesus existed in the beginning? No, I didn't ask you that. John 1.1 1, 1 is written in Greek. The verb was, aim. Parse that verb for me. What is it? Because that's going to bury your claim that Jesus wasn't always conscious. I don't even, I don't, I don't know Greek. Why are you here trying to have a discussion with me when you haven't done the necessary homework to study the text more thoroughly instead of reading it on the surface level? Listen, dude, as you can see, uh, I'm not your typical evangelifish. I'll make you cry if you do something silly. Right? I'm, I'm not going to do that. All right. So I'm an Arian. So basically, I believe that the Father is the only uh, true God. He's eternal. Uh, that Jesus is subordinate to the Father. He's the first creation. And then yeah, prove the, that he's uh, the first creation. Somebody. Prove to me he's the first creation. Give me the verse. So Colossians 1.15, on Proverbs 8.22, Revelation 3.14. Which one are you picking? Uh, I can pick Revelation 3.14. Okay. Now, go to Revelation 3.14. Read it for me. And unto the angel of the church of Laodicea write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. Okay. What's the word for beginning there? Uh, well, it just says beginning. You want me to pull up the Greek? I know the Greek. It's RK, right? Go to Revelation 21, 6 to 7. The and Greek. he said unto me, it right. is done. I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is... Uh, a thirst of a foundation of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he will be my son. So in that context, who's speaking? Uh, this is the Father speaking. And then the Father says he's beginning and end, RK and telos. What does it mean that he's the beginning? It looks like he's saying that he's timeless. So you sure, right? There. Beginning means timeless, right? Uh, yeah. Go to John 5, 22. The Father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son. So who's going to come to judge? Uh, the Son, Jesus. You sure, right? The sun's coming, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, now go to Matthew 16, 27. Uh, for the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father and with the angels, then he shall reward every man according to his works. Okay, now pay attention. Who's coming to repair a man according to his works? Uh, the Son of Man, which is Jesus. Yeah, we know that, right? So you agree Jesus is coming to judge, not the Father, and he's going to come repay you according to your works, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, now go to Revelation 22, 12. Read it. Uh, and behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according to his works shall so be. So let me ask you a question. According to Matthew 16, 27, John 5, 22, who is the one coming to reward people according to what they've done? Uh, Jesus. Okay, read Revelation 22, 12 again. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according uh, as his work shall be. Who's that? Who's coming? Uh, I'm going to hang up on you if you don't answer. Who's coming? Uh, let me, let me, uh, I'm trying to read it. No, read 12. Uh, it's in front part. of you. The only one that's coming to repay is Jesus. Don't tap dance. I'm going to hang up on you if you don't answer honestly. Okay. So who's coming? Uh, looks like 
Yeah. Well, isn't hold okay, on. Bye isn't bye. Bye bye. Send well, me a letter. What version are you reading? New World. Yeah. So you're a Jehovah Witness Satanist. Okay. Now. No, I'm not a Jehovah's Witness. No. If you're not a Jehovah Witness, why are you stupid in reading the New World translation? Because it correctly translates John one one. So then you're a liar. Let's go to John one. Let's see how honest Let's your Greek it. is. Go to John one three. Read for me the Greek. All right. So it says. Uh, all right. Before the rapture. All right. So it says Panta di Auto Agent. Eginetto Kai. Yeah, yeah, you're, yeah you're, you're a joke. Okay. Now, again, it is. Kai Chorus. Okay. Said. Panta di Autu, again, it is. Again, it is. Kai Chorus, Autu, again, it is. O de en, O gegonin. Now, translate that for me. Okay, all things through him came into being, and without him came into being not even one yeah. thing that has come into being. And all the things that he created is referring to what? What creation? The Genesis creation, heaven and earth. And then go to Genesis 2.1. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. You just said this is referring to the Genesis account. Heavens yes. and the earth and all their host of them, right? Yes. So who did the Father use to bring the heavens and earth and all their host of them into being? The Word of God. Okay, now, so you do agree the Word was there before the heavens, right? Yes. Where was he dwelling? Uh, he was outside of the heavens and the earth. We don't know his exact location. But what What do you have besides heaven and earth? You don't. So those are the two things that comprise matter, but you have time. No, not only time, because it's talking about all the heavens, all the earth, even where the angels dwell. That's why it's the word host. So I'm going to ask you again. Where was the word before the heavens and the earth and all their hosts, which would include time? Because it's not just no, referring time is not to... Included. Okay, show me where time is not included. Go to Jude 1. Right. Jude 1, 25. Okay, read the Greek for me. The only God, Savior of us through Jesus Christ, the Lord of us, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all the time. Before what? Time. Wait, wait, before what? Before all. Read it. Time is not included in the th It just things. said it, before all time. What's the Greek word for time here? Enio, Aeonos. Okay. Before all time, you're interlinear, right? Go to Psalm 102 for me, please. Uh, hear my prayer, O Lord, and let me cry unto thee. Who is he addressing the psalm to? Well, I would I would imagine that is unto uh, Yahweh or whatever. Yes, it's Yahweh. It's not. You don't have to imagine. Now read 24 to 27 because you're going to see how it goes to Hebrews 1. Just be patient. Oh, my God, take me not away in the midst of that my days. Thy years are throughout all generations. Of old hast thou laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of thy hands. They shall perish, but thou shalt endure, yea, all of them. Uh, wax old like garment as a vesture thou shalt change them and they shall be changed but thou, thou art the same and thy years uh, shall have no end and verse 24 it's my god right yeah yeah obviously god inspired the psalms I yeah but that. who is the psalmist talking to who's he yeah, talking, talking to? Yeah. How that relate to Hebrews? if Did you're you not patient that listen the more you're not patient the more i'm going to embarrass you be patient because i first want to make sure you get the point he's talking to his god okay. jehovah right Okay. Uh, if you don't answer directly, I'm going to hang up on you. Is he talking to his God? Yes, Jehovah? he's talking to his. He's talking to his God. Okay. Okay. And who's his God? Just want to make sure, because I'm I'm recording this. I want to make sure your words are recorded for perpetuity. Who's his God? Uh, obviously, the Yahweh, the the God of the Bible. Go to Hebrews one. Read Hebrews one eight to ten to start with. Uh, Under the sun, he saith, Thy throne, O God, is forever. Now, before you move on, hold on, Thomas. Who's he talking to? Uh, he, I, I imagine it's the Father talking to the Son. Keep on. Yeah, it says, But under the sun, he saith, Thy throne, O God, is forever, and the scepter of thy righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Mm -hmm. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore, God, even thy God, hath appointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. And thou, Lord, in the beginning, hast laid the foundation of the work of the earth. And the heavens are the work of thine hands. No, you just said the father's talking to the son. What did he say to the son again? Verse 10. Thou, Lord, in the beginning has laid the foundation of the earth, and the, the heavens are the work of thine hands. They will perish, but thou remainest, and they shall all wax old as garment. And as a vesture, thou fold them up, and they shall be changed. But thou art the same, thy year shall not fail. So we just heard you say, this is the father talking to the son. But what the father said to the son is Psalm 102. 25 to 27. Psalm 102, 25, 27. It's about Jehovah God creating the heavens and the earth, remaining unchangeable, unlike creation. And Hebrew says, that's the Father glorifying the Son, speaking to the Son, identifying the Son as Jehovah God, the Creator who is unchangeable. You ready? Yeah, sure, I have a little bit. Okay, go to Isaiah 44, 24. Thus said the Lord, thy Redeemer, and he that formed thee from the womb, I am the Lord that maketh all things, that stretcheth forth the heavens alone. The spread of the earth uh, by myself. So, how many people helped the Lord there to spread it, stretch out the heavens? Yeah, but like if you assume this is no, talking no, about the, the triune God, no, which no, you I'm have not. to reduce Listen. the civilianism Listen. in this case. No, it's not. I'm going to destroy your straw man in a minute. I'm going to embarrass you for no, that stupid comment. Not. How many people helped Jehovah create? 
Well, none. It okay. just says my stuff. Job nine, John Job nine, verse eight. Which verse alone eight. spreadeth out the heavens and, and treadeth it's upon it's the it's waves it's of the sea. How okay. many? How many help Job again? Don't bring up because you don't know what Sabellian is in a minute. I'm going to correct you. How many help Jehovah? And doing what he did. Well, he just says alone. But okay, like, now go to Isaiah 54, 5. For that, uh, the, thy maker is thine husband. The Lord of hosts is his name. And thy redeemer, the holy one of Israel, the, the God of the whole earth, shall be shall he be called. Okay. Okay. Now, can you tell me what the Hebrew word maker is? Yeah, sure. I just have to open up the dictionary here. The dictionary? You better read the form of the word, not give me the root word. The form is plural. Can you give me the exact Hebrew word? Don't give me... Because that means you don't know how to read the Hebrew, which is fine. I'm not trying to condemn you for that. What is the exact word? I know it is from Asa. Is it singular or plural? It doesn't say here in this translation. Okay, so why don't you just say, I don't know how to read it in Hebrew, so I can tell you what it is. I have no clue. Nah, that's even better. Now, how about husband? I don't know. Okay, the, now the let me help you. Here in this case it's, should... Yeah, it's going to help you and destroy your uh, false straw man of civilianism. It's plural. Husband here is the plural of Baal and Maker is the plural of Asa. So literally it's for your husbands are your makers. Your makers are your husbands. It's referring to God in the plural. It's calling them makers and husbands.